Fall is falling, falling folly. Gravity. The dive, the plunge, the fall from grace. Air rushes against him, slamming into his face, chest and legs. Instinctively, he spreads his arms and legs to create the maximum surface area possible. The night clothes he wears are practically being ripped off him by the force of the wind. In fact, the buttons of his shirt finally give out and it rips open. Around him, he can see nothing, obscured by both darkness and the wind stinging his eyes. Fall has been trained as a non-terrestrial officer among a myriad of other skills, including parachuting in a variety of situations. He knows to keep his wits about him. There's also a part of his mind that assumes this whole experience is some kind of dream or virtual reality simulation. By the entity that dwells in the tower, the strange fairy or holy woman of the tower. The ring. If I can just reach my ring, what's going on? There is no time for fall to reach the ring. A change is happening that he can feel. It starts with his feet. Something is beginning to grip them. And that something is the materialization of shoes. Yes, shoes are forming around his feet and he senses socks materializing on his ankles. The wind is letting up, which tells Fall that somehow his velocity is decreasing. Clothing is growing, appearing, forming, pick a verb, friends, around his upper and lower body. Invisible hands seem to adjust his position, standing him erect so that he is slowly descending feet first. The wind is now only a soft breeze, and Fall raises his hands to wipe his eyes. As he does so, he realizes he is wearing a long-sleeved shirt and jacket, which, after a quick rub of his eyes, he sees is a button-up shirt. Indeed, inexplicably, he now wears a complete black suit with a black tie caressing his neck. On one wrist, he sports a metallic watch, and his ring has transformed into a thick, gem-studded affair, reminiscent of a college ring. He lacks the time to inspect himself further, for his training has already kicked in, forcing him to take in his surroundings. Fall is floating gently down, down. Below him lie the lights of a city at night. Car horns can be heard, and the scent of smoke and coal-fired stoves fills the air. It is raining lightly here. Whatever energies are holding him aloft, or rather letting him down gently, are nearly done with their work. The surface of an all too real rooftop is closing in on him, approaching at the speed of an escalator, promising a gentle landing on what Fall perceives as polished dark dress shoes. The invisible ushers are gone and gravity pulls on Fall with all its reality. He becomes aware that he is wearing something under one arm. Indeed, a kind of brace or belt is snug against him. Reaching into his jacket, he grips the handle of a gun resting in a shoulder holster. As he explores his pockets, he finds a long wallet filled with cards and cash, all unreadable in the feeble light. He also discovers a small pocket knife in one pant pocket and some coins in the other. On his head rests a soft fedora. The city is breathtaking in its realism. It doesn't seem like a modern city though, well, modern for fall from his 2084 perspective. Rather, it feels like something out of an old film. Maybe he's in the rundown part of town. Still no flying vehicles. Buildings are only a dozen stories high at best. If he has truly left the tower, if that secret chamber, Oracle, really did possess the power to transport him all the way here, to the dim lands themselves and to Bliss's domain, then this could be really happening and therefore serious. Fall tries to clear his head and analyze the world around him, thinking out loud as he does so. Bliss's influence intrudes upon the Rogue Queen's territory, morphing it, reshaping it, and wiping out all traces of the Rogue Queen's presence, supported as she is by higher powers. Bliss overwrites the Rogue Queen here, 
laying out her own dream, her own vision for the place. A decidedly earthy 1940s and 1950s noir vibe. Fall comes to realize where he is. Not exactly the super spy secret agent he had aimed to be, but it will have to do. First things first, right Teddy? He asks aloud to the night sky and the light mist of rain gently falling around him. He walks to the edge of the roof and looks down three or four stories to street level. Okay, number one. How do I get down from this roof without slipping and breaking my neck? And how can I avoid this rain while doing so? He asks aloud, then stares down at the ring on his finger. Stepping away from the ledge, he scans the skyline again. And number two, how can I find Ninninshu in this big place? That is, if she's even in this region. He gives the roof a good quick scan, sizing up dimensions, seeing how much space he has to work with, then peeks over the edge again, checking for distance once more. What the hell is the name of this town anyway? 